Hi everyone, welcome back to another brake building video. Now, I've done these brake building videos before where I've talked about the thought process and trying to think three shots ahead. Now, I think sometimes that can seem a little bit complicated, so in this video, I'm gonna put some extra graphics on the screen and just talk through in some bite-sized pieces how I think about putting these brakes together. As always, remember, if you do enjoy this video, remember to give it a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Right, so we're gonna have a look at this video here, and this was actually a century break that I compiled. So this should give you a really good insight into the strategy and the thinking involved in building these big brakes. Now, there's gonna be some graphics that are gonna come up on the screen, so we're gonna see shots one, two, and three, and feel free to pause the video at any point if the video is going a little bit quickly and you want to look at exactly the plan that I'm mapping out. So we'll go through this and we'll very quickly see that what players are doing is they make a plan. So I'm picking right, shot number one, Shot two is the shot on the black, and shot three is the shot on the red. Now we'll very quickly see that that helps us to decide on shot number two, the important one, what angle do I need on shot number two so that I can get to shot number three? And that's what players mostly aren't doing when you watch players in clubs, so this is gonna be very important. The strategy now starts again, shot one, two, and then three is the black again. So that helps me decide that I'll pop this black. On shot number two, I need a little angle on the red, so that I can get back to the black ball again. That's what's very important. So, popping the black there, left a little angle, and then I can, can get back to the black, which is that shot number three. Now it repeats again, let's have a look. So we've got shot number one, two is the shot on the black, and then the third shot is gonna be one of the reds in the pack or that loose one, because I'm going to go into the pack of reds. Again, by deciding I'm going into the pack of reds, it's helped me to decide that I need an angle on shot number two, which is the one on the black, then I can get into the pack. But you can see that this process repeats every single time you come to the table. Shot number one, shot number two could be one of those reds there because I'm going into the pack. And in this situation, if I just pause the video, it's actually difficult here to um, pick that shot number three because I'm relying on a little bit of luck here. I'm hoping to be on that loose one or maybe one in the pack, but I can't pick the perfect angle on that red to then know exactly which colour I'm going to play for next. So if we resume the video, sometimes the, sh the third shot, you have to be allowing yourself a little bit of freedom because we don't know exactly where the white's going to land. But there, I've got a nice shot on the red that I wanted to be on, and now I can start making this plan again. So, round behind the shot, I'm gonna play that red, then the black, and then the red below the black, so shot number three. That helps me decide shot number two, which is the one on the black, I have to leave that angle so that I can get to the one that's below the black. So pot in this red off the cushion and then I've left a nice angle so that I can get to that loose red. Now here I'm just coming around the table just having a little look there at what goes. It's always good as you're building these brakes to just see what passes and what reds are available and into where. But here we go, so the plan, red, uh, so black sorry, red and then back to the black again. So that's the little plan. That means I know I need an angle on that red that's below the black, and then I can get back to the black again. So I'm potting this black, trying to leave myself a little angle, and then I can get to the black. Now I've left myself a little bit straighter actually than I wanted to, so let's have a look at the plan. So I'm not too bad here. So I can pot this red, leave myself a shot on the black, but then my third shot is to go into that gap there with the white, so you can see that area I've highlighted. So that means on shot number two, which is the black, I need to be a little bit low on the black so that I can get the white into that third position. So I've bounced off the cushion nicely and left myself, yep, this nice little angle. So now we can make the plan again. Shot one, two, and then three is the black again. So if I go into that little area that's marked as number two there, I should land nice and straight on a red and then I can get back to the black again. So I'm potting this black into that area. Yep, I've landed nicely on a red, and now I can get back to the black. So let's have a look. So round behind the shot, shot number one is going to be this red in front of me. Then I wanna to get to the black, and then I'm going to get to that third red there, or maybe the other one that's also gonna be freed once I pop this one. So that again has helped me decide I'll just go a little bit low on the black, and then I can get up onto those two reds. But I've made a slight mistake there, so let's do a bit of a pause. So you just see the graphics come up. So what I'm deciding here is I'm going to pop the black, obviously, as shot number one, and then shot number two is going to be one of those three reds. Now, obviously, here, 
I can't pick precisely exactly the angle I'm going to have on one of those three reds. So here it's very difficult to pick that third shot. All a player is looking to do here is to land nicely on one of those three reds and that's going to help you to continue the break. So if uh, I go to play this shot here, so I've got that nice plan now. So I'm just trying to get the white out into open play and make sure that I leave myself a nice shot on one of those reds. And as I say, you can't be too precise there because you're moving the white a big distance. But this time here, I'm just going to have a look what goes, I think, again, which reds pass, and then we can make the plan again. So I'm going to pop this red that's right in front of me, then I'm going to play the pink, and then I want to get to one of these three reds here. So that helps me decide on shot number two, which is the pink. I need to be a little bit high. So I need to just be a fraction high on the pink, and then it means I can get to one of those three reds. Now, of course, as you can see as the video is going through, we're just repeating these same patterns. So I'm going to pot the pink. Shot number two is going to be that red, and then I want to get to the black. So I'm potting the pink and nudging the red away from the pink so that I land on shot number two. That should leave me straight on that red, and then I can get to the black again as my third shot. So I'll just nudge that red away from the pink. That's opened things up nicely. But all the time you can see that players are not immediately thinking of a big break, you're just repeating this same pattern. There's my first red. Shot number two is the black. Shot number three is that red there. So I need to leave a little angle on the black. So just trying to finish just a fraction low on the black and then I can get to that next red. So I'll run through. And actually here, it's quite interesting. So let's just have a little pause a second. So here, I could still play for the red that I wanted to be on. So that one just to the right and above the black there. But I actually spot here that it's possible to screw off the cushion and move this awkward red. So it's one red that's a little bit awkward. If I move that one, I can also leave myself on the other one to the corner. So the reason you do things like that is it feels like if I don't land on the one that I'm moving, I've always got the insurance of landing on another one. So what I do here is I decide I'm potting the black and then shot number two will be that red. And then th the third shot could be any color depending on where I land. I, I might be able to go for the pink, the black, the blue. So I don't have to be too precise here, but I'll just spot that opportunity to screw into that red and move it off the cushion. That was the only or the loose one. So I am still on that one to the right corner, but now I've got this nice bonus of this one. So if I pop this red here to the middle, then I can get onto the blue and then I can get to one of these two reds here. So again, that means I need to be just top side of the blue. So I'm going to need a bit of right hand side actually on this to get the correct angle. And then off the cushion, shot number two, which was my blue, just the top side so I can get to that third shot. Now we've got the blue, this red is my second red, and then down to the black. So I'm trying to land pretty straight on shot number two so that I can just roll through for the black. So all that plan is decided, and then you've just got to concentrate on potting that blue and get yourself down into that area. Now I think I actually landed a little bit straighter than I wanted. I'd have preferred to have been able to kiss into the other red but same again shot number one is this red then I'll get to the black and then I can get to shot number three here and I actually decide here that the best thing to do is to pot the red and follow the white round the corner so lots of topspin and that should leave me low on the black and get me a little bit closer to the black if I didn't go around the corner I'd have had to have been a bit further away from the black so by going around the corner just get a little bit closer in so again let's make the plan shot one is the black Shot two is going to be that red, and then shot three will be the black again. So I need to get just a little bit high on the second red, and then that should leave me an angle to get back to my third black. So I'm going up the table there, and I have got nicely on that red, but I think actually here, and this happens all the time in break building, I'm just looking, and I've landed pretty good on this red to the middle, which it could work, be a problem in the future because of where it is, so I decide now, let's move it now. So let's move that red, get top side of the blue, and then I can get to that third shot. I just decided that I may not land on this red any better than this, and they're always a bit tricky to the middle, so we just go top side of the blue and get to that red. So let's start the plan again. So I'm on the blue. I want to get to this red here, 
and then to the black. So again, that's helped me decide that on shot number two, which is the red, I need to land on it pretty straight so I can just roll through for the black. I've also got the added bonus here that I can play for the red next to the pink as well, just below that pink. That gives you two reds to play for, so you're not having to be really precise when you play those positional shots. So now I think here, I think I need my extension because I just can't quite reach this red. But I have landed exactly where I wanted to be, so I can play it just to roll through for the black. So I decide, yep, this is the red I'm playing, leave myself on the black, and then this is going to be my third red. So I need to just leave it just slightly high of the black so that I can, from that black, which is shot number two, I can get to that third red. So obviously if I went through too far, I would snooker myself. So I've got to be careful there not to go too far. But that's worked out nicely again. And now let's make the plan. So let's go, this black in front of me, shot number two is this one, and then I can get back to the black again. So that just means I need to bounce on and off the black cushion and try and leave myself reasonably straightish on this red. Don't want to go too high because you don't want to risk snookering yourself on the other red. But that should just help you just bounce up into that position and then I can get back to the black again. So I'm just looking whether the red to the middle was any good, but I still decide on this one. So let's pop that red, pop the black, and then obviously we've got to get to that red. So I just need, again, just a little bit of a high angle on the black, and then I can get to that loose red. And I actually here, I played a little bit of right hand side just to stop the white landing too high on the black. And actually, I probably didn't need to put as much on as I did, and I've landed a bit straight. Now this time, it's important again. So obviously shot one and shot two here. Now if we just pause that again. Now here, I can't be too precise where I'm landing on this red because I've got to play this red to the middle. So I've got to bring the white into this area here and leave a shot on that red to the middle. Now that means that with it being a pot to the middle, I can't be really precise with where the white's going. So I'll just try and leave a really good shot on the red so I'm not having got too much angle. And then I will choose which color I play depending on how well I land on that red. So again, sometimes, as I say, you can't be too precise because snooker is very difficult. So I'm just trying to make sure I leave myself good on this red so I haven't got too much angle, which I did nicely. And then as it happens, yep, I've landed nicely on it to just play for the black. So pop that red, play for the black, and obviously shot number three is the yellow up there. So I now know I need a, an angle on the black to get to the yellow, and I've just overheat it slightly, which now means I've got to go from the red to the yellow, and if we just quickly pause it there, again, I can't be too precise with where I land on the yellow here because the white has got to travel such a big distance. It means that I'm just happy to just leave a good shot on the yellow and then I'll deal with getting on the green once the white is up there because I can't pick the white up and place it in my hand. It's traveling such a big distance. I'm just aiming for that little area. So yeah, you can see the white coming round and I'm just trying to put the white in that area there to leave a nice shot on the yellow. Now, obviously now we've got shots one, two, and three. So you've got to leave an angle on the green to get to the brown, which is shot number three. So of course now it becomes a bit easier for players because the balls are almost labeled for you. So shots one, two, and three, obviously got to leave an angle on the brown in a second. So pop the green, leave an angle on shot number two, which is the brown to get to the blue. So now you can see this process repeating. So shot one, two, and three, Leave an angle on the blue, don't want to go too far. So leave an angle, don't go too far, and then you can get to the pink. Obviously now, shots one, two, and three, blue, pink, black. So I've got to get an angle on the pink so that I can get to the black. And this actually comes up just a little bit too short. So I'll play, obviously now we've only got two shots. Bit of right hand side here to send the white back across, stop it from running away too far up the table away from me, and that leaves a nice shot on the black. Obviously now, just drop the black in, nothing to do positionally, but hopefully a great insight there into that plan that we make in as players on every shot. So as I always say, I really hope you found this video useful. Hopefully now you can see the way I'm always splitting the break into thinking those three shots ahead. Whenever I get to a new shot, I'll start that process again, and then hopefully that makes it nice and clear in your mind now how a player puts those bigger breaks together. 
As always, if you did enjoy this video, please remember to give the video a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. That just really helps me to keep all these videos coming. If anyone's interested in any personal one-to-one -one training sessions, I'm working on this very table, helping players to improve their game all the time. I'm doing things like I've done just in this video here where I'm talking about break building and shot selection. You'll be on the table and we'll be discussing what balls to play, how to play position, what spin to put on the cue ball. So if anyone's interested in that, please get in touch with me and I'd love to help you with your game. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.